Ladies and gentlemen, you welcome to this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television, live from our headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. My name is Babla Jonathan, and our top stories in this edition of the news, fake news, rains down panic in the town of Limbe, southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon, an alleged attack in Ombe sent parents running to schools to save their children. We will be bringing to you details in this edition of the 6 p.m. newscast on Equinox Television and the Minister of Territorial Administration of the Republic of Cameroon at Tanganji Paul says the President of the Republic Paul Beers won the war against terrorism talking about insecurity in the southwest and northwest regions of the country but also in the far north region of the Republic of Cameroon Minister Tanganji Paul was speaking in Kumba today alongside two other governments ministers, ministers of basic and secondary education who urged parents and all inhabitants of the two anglophone regions of the country to remain firm and to remain positive in the face of security challenges, notably with regards to pupils and students who are going to school for the 2020-2021 academic year after the killing of seven of them and they uh, were in an incident in Kumba and over 13 of them were also injured in that incident. We begin this newscast in the OPEC city of Limbe in this crisis hit southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon where fake information rained down panic waves across the town of Limbe and information that began circulating on social media earlier today uh, talking about an attack in the Ombe in a school, government technical high school. Uh, Ombe sent parents running to schools to save their children and there was total commotion and uh, panic in the town of uh, Limbe today and this is coming after the last attack, after the last tragedy in a school in the Kumba two subdivision which left at least seven students dead and more than 10 others severely injured and they are said to be responding to treatment in hospital and this incident came to add to the atmosphere of uncertainty, panic, and fear, which is increasing in the northwest and southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon after the Kumba incident, which came less than nine months after the uh, another tragic incident, which occurred in Garbo on the 14th of February 2020. Garbo is in the Dongamantun Division, northwest region of the Republic of Cameroon, and these are uh, incidents major incidents that are having a serious impact on education and the current academic year in the two anglophone regions of the Republic of Cameroon. This other incident in the Limbe today brought with it a lot of panic and fear and sent parents on the streets running from one school to the other to save their children. It was, of course, fake information. And what exactly happened in Government Technical High School, Ombe? Smanji Kange answers that question in this report. Ombe, October 26, 2020. It was a calm zone we met upon our arrival at an area where rumors had spread that two students have been shot dead heading towards the main gate of Government Technical High School in Ombe where it is alleged that students were shot, security guards welcomed us. As we entered the school compound, everywhere was calm. In one of the classes, students were spotted taking lectures, while others were taking a nap. The students, however, we are aware about the rumor. We had a phone call in the guiding class when somebody was calling her to shoot. We confirmed shot dead. So she told me to go check the area and see how far he was going. I was coming down, but 
we're not like trembling because we had the forces of law and order in school to protect us. So we came down here. We're just okay. We're calm. The forces of law and order were patrolling around the, the camp. Even the principal left her office to come and take care the students. Leaving the class, we went to the principal's office. We want to thank God that we are quiet. We have been here in the morning. And the children, we had our morning devotion, and the children have gone to class. The teachers are teaching the children, and the place is quiet. From all indications, you have passed around and seen for yourself. I am not the one to put in the measures, but I just know that the government is already doing its part by sending security around, and we want to study. We have nothing to do with guns. To the parents, we pray that they should pray for us and keep on supporting us, encouraging the children to come to school. But asked why the rumors came out from Ombe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But the truth is it that is prevailing. As we went out of the government technical high school, Ombe, at the main gate, we met a parent who has also arrived to check her child after getting the rumors. They told me that uh, they have killed two children in Ombe. So my child is in, in Limbe, he will live in Limbe. So I have to leave Limbe to come to Ombe to check what has happened with my child. Fortunately, I came, all the teachers are in school, the, their vehicles, their cars are in school, the children are in class, so I thank God. Just like in May 2018, Another rumor forced schools to close abruptly in some towns of the southwest region. Manji Kengebe reporting there. A prophetess says the president of the Republic of Cameroon, the ministers and all Cameroonians have failed in their duties, in their responsibilities. Sister Marie was speaking today in Limbe on the sidelines of the visit of three government ministers in the town of Kumba after the killing of over seven students in a school. The incident equally left about 13 of the students severely uh, injured and she indicated that with regards to this incident the president of the republic the government of the country has failed in its duty to protect the citizens in the meantime the minister of territorial administration atanganji paul said the president of the republic paul Bia, has won the war against terrorism referring notably to the socio-political and security crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of the republic of cameroon he and other government members including the governor of the southwest region bena ukalia bilai indicated that the state remains strong and firm and determined to crush down the secessionist uh, tendencies rising in the northwest and southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon. Take a listen to Prophetess Marie and the Minister of Territorial Administration and of course the Governor of the Southwest Region, Benau Kalia I want to say shame on the President. I want to say shit to all of us, all of us we are filled. And now let us know what to call it. It is the founder, it is the finisher of every decision. And when we depend on him, the future will come. Thank you, my friend. Those who want to tire vers le bas, il faudrait que le message soit clair. Quand les terroristes ont commencé, ils ont pensé qui vont avoir une caution internationale. Aujourd'hui, force est de constater que le président Paul Biya a gagné cette guerre contre le terrorisme. Le Cameroun reste un pays uni, debout, solide, indivisible, sur la conduite éclairée du père de la nation, son excellence. I condemn in the strongest possible terms this barbaric and cowardly crime against innocent children. I've also instructed that appropriate measures be taken diligently to ensure that the perpetrators of those despicable acts are apprehended 
by our defense and security forces and brought to justice. Finally, I address my full solidarity and sincere condolences to the bereaved families as well as the educational community. I join my wishes and the deepest sympathy of my wife for the prompt recovery of the injury. Please accept the governor the assurances of my highest consideration. Signed, Paul B. Is that not very important? And the Minister of Secondary Education, Professor Pauline Nalova uh, Lyonga, said that Cameroonians in the northwest and southwest regions of the country must remain positive, must have a positive mindset despite the challenges that they are facing. She was notably talking to parents, urging them to continue sending their children to school despite the attacks and the threats from the pro-independence fighters in those two English-speaking regions of the country. Attacks also coming from unidentified individuals for i should equally indicate that some of the secessionists or pro-independence uh, leaders have indicated that they have nothing to do with the attack on the school in kumbatu subdivision indicating that they cannot kill the ass, the very people they are fighting uh, to protect so the attacks are coming from unidentified armed men though the government of the republic of cameroon is blaming the attacks on the pro-independence fighters the minister of secondary education says that all notably parents must remain firm and steadfast take a listen to her we will continue to go up as we are mourning and coming to mourn with you as the minister of secondary education but at the same time I am carrying a strong message to be positive. Those children are not dead for nothing. You will not continue to mourn and give pride of place to those fellows who are causing this sadness. I'm coming with a strong message. You cannot let school not happen. Because if you do, you have given away the strongest thing that you can ever do for your family. These children, by taking them away, they need our future from you. They need it from you. It is not, we cannot. We just cannot allow it. As they go low, we should go on. Seeking for the most important thing on earth. And I ask myself, when they kill these children, and we sit down and mourn these children, what stories are we going to tell our children tomorrow? What will you tell them that you did when your child was killed? Perhaps that you could not do anything at that time. But what else will you do after that? We are the ones who tell the stories, especially the mothers. But of course, the fathers are supposed to tell stories of great deeds. What deeds are we going to tell the king? My brothers and sisters, this is the time for us to change. To say, no more. No more. We don't want to cry. I don't want to cry in front of you, no matter how much I feel it. But I will not, because my brothers, I want you to tell those little children that they have not, they are not dead in vain, but that something is going to happen that will, of which we will always remember them, we will always pray. Perhaps God has given us this moment so that we turn things around. Let us turn things around. And we can turn things around with the law. I'm going to... 
Cameroon's Minister of Basic Education, Professor Laurent Serge Etundi, who was speaking in Kumba earlier today, also condemned the killing of the students in Kumba II subdivision and said that the right to education of children in the two English-speaking regions of the country must not be compromised. Listen to him. Pour ce qui vient d'arriver, je voudrais également vous interpeller, chers frères et sœurs, ces gens qui causent la mort de nos frères et sœurs et aujourd'hui de nos enfants sont aussi nos frères, sont nos parents. Indeed, they are our brothers and sisters. They choose the bad way to vindicate, I don't know why, and to think that deeply in their mind, to accede at this position, they must kill, they must treat it. But at the end of the day, we know many of them, I'm sure, because they don't come from nowhere and resume their bad actions to us. Ils viennent de nos familles. Ils sont nos frères, ils sont nos enfants, ils sont nos neveux. Et aujourd'hui, ils ont franchi la barrière. Ils ont franchi la ligne rouge. Dans ma tradition, quand vous avez tué votre frère ou votre soeur, vous ne pouvez plus vivre avec la société. Si c'est un accident, on fait le rite. Et nous l'appelons le tzo. C'est un rite très difficile. Alors, peut-être que moi je ne suis pas bafou, mais sa majesté là, il pourra expliquer plus tard. Est-ce qu'il est autorisé, par exemple, chez les bafous, de tuer son frère et de vivre comme on veut Professor Laurent Serge Etundingwa, Cameroon's Minister of Basic Education, speaking then and talking to the press, the member of Cameroon's lower house of parliament for Kumba Oban constituency, Honorable Tabot Lawson, highlighted suggestions of the reinforcement of the military presence in the town of Kumba, southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon, in order to ensure that such incidents never occur again in that part of the southwest region and the rest of Anglia from Cameroon. Take a listen to Honorable Tabot Lawson. Not the gendarmerie, a military base, station base in Kosala, creation of a police district in Kumba 3. At the entrance point of town, which is Barombi, there should be a base in Barombi, a gendarmerie post. And above all, I am including the government to encourage the creation of vigilante because the military alone cannot be spotted all over the place. If each quartier has a vigilante, well fortified vigilante, controlled by the mayors of the area, not the administrator, administration, the mayors, because the mayor uh, is the one who lays with his people, controlled by the mayor you will see that things will go 10 times better than what, have, what it is today. They have no bill to pay. They are paying no franc as bill. Their bills will be fooled by the state completely, 100%. The state will be able to take care of that. Uh, yeah, and I'm appealing that, despite all that which has happened, let parents not deter to send their children to school. Because the right to education is a universal charter. Children must go to school. Our children must go to school. We should allow our children to go to school. I know we are bereaved. I just believe that after the burial of these children who have passed on, academic uh, educational life in the city of Kuba should again uh, come to, to full force.
President of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, Professor Maurice Kamtu, the government of the Republic of Cameroon, is fully responsible for what happened in the Kumba, talking about the killing of the over seven students and uh, over 13 of them who were equally injured in that incident. According to Professor Maurice Kamtu, the government has failed to protect the people. Take a listen. While disapproving of the capitalization of violence in the Anglophone crisis, reiterates once again the following emergency measures. One, an immediate ceasefire accepted by both the government and separatist groups. Two, the establishment of an independent international commission of inquiry to shed light on all the crimes committed in the Northwest and Southwest since the outbreak of the Anglophone crisis, starting with the Kumba tragedy. Three, the opening of a genuine inclusive dialogue with the facilitation of international partners. Four, the release of all those arrested in connection with the Anglophone crisis. The implementation of these measures is even more urgent since no army can win an asymmetrical civil war without decimating the innocent civilian population and therefore without committing atrocities that no responsible government can allow. It is impossible for the government to put a policeman or gendarme behind every person living in the Northwest and the Southwest. As I have said repeatedly, a war waged by a government against its own people is the most blatant expression of policy, policy failure. It becomes one of the most serious crimes deeply shocking the human conscience when it is done while it can be avoided. Now that the warmongers have experienced it and now know not only the high price but also that it has no way out, I'm hopeful that everyone will understand that we must finally give a chance to a genuine dialogue between the children of this country. What happened in Kumba after Ngarbu, Zenevet around Moskota, Pinyin, Muyuka, and other places must never, I say, never happen again. Also, in view of the emotion which overwhelms all our people. And in order to engrave the tragedy of Kumba, as well as those which preceded it in the collective memory of our nation, I call all Cameroonians, regardless of political or religious persuasions, to do together for the day of Thursday, 29th, October 2020, the day of national mourning. I ask each of us to dress in black on this day and to express through the peaceful means of your choice, your pain, your solidarity with the families of the victims and your call for an immediate end to the fratricidal war in the Northwest and Southwest regions. Please. Professor Maurice Kamto, National President of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, talking about the incident in Kumba and highlighting solutions to the Anglophone crisis proposed by his political party. And in the town of Bamenda today, women were on the streets condemning the killing of the students 
in the northwest, in the southwest region of the country, notably in Kumba, and also calling for an end to the bloodshed across the board, across the two Anglophone regions of the Republic of Cameroon. Both tell reports. This is political group! <laughs> They are women with no political, religious, cultural or social colors. They are angered by the killing of children on a campus in Kumba. Innocent became dead and dead. Now we became the young guys. So I joined this fight because they are killing our children, my dear sister. Again, not only two is the finish and so I'll do sir. I'll go sir. I'll go sir. The incident that occurred on Saturday, October 24th is not the first since the escalation of the teachers and lawyers strike in 2017. February 14, 2020 was the Ngarbu incident and on October 24, 2020 it is the Kumba massacre. But these are not the only dates. Call for Timasang in Moyoka, Ayafo Florence in Pinyin, Treasure in Bamenda, members of the Defense and Security Forces as well as the non stadium groups to name this few have been murdered, but the war is not ending. The women are questioning how long they will have to mourn, mourning for their children, their husbands and sisters. From downtown Bamenda, they moved to the governor's office at Upstation. They are joined along the streets by many, including their children, who would have been in class but are observing a ghost town. The city of Bamenda is partially functional this Tuesday. Their hearts are heavy, their worries hard to express, and many could barely talk. Receiving them at the premises of his office, the Northwest Regional Governor Chofo Dobin prescribes collaboration for an end to violence. We denounce what happened in Kumba and we are conscious of their sufferings. They have suffered to deliver those young boys that were murdered. And it is but normal that they should express their mindset. We have a frank discussion with them, and we agree on, upon a common strategy for tomorrow to be a better day for our regions. This is not the first time the women are taken to the streets, and this visit to the governor is not the first, but they want it to be the last. Those that die in Kumba are not the first. Yes. They are the worst. They should be the last. They should be the last. They should be the last. Enough is the last. I'll be happy. At least the governor don't behave like Papa for picking them. At least he don't give poor water with drink them. May that killing stop. Whether Amber or military, we no need for no. We know the order than our brother them. But if you not say all we go die for Sika gunshots, we no need them. We need peace. Our national anthem be showing peace work for the land. But now, now war work for the land now for this Cameroon. As the crisis is prolonged, more families are affected. These women in tears are asking for nothing but a return to normal life. From peace, work, fatherland to war, war, fatherland. A statement by one of the protesters in the Bamenda and all are putting hands on a deck to ensure that the peace, work, fatherland motto of the Republic of Cameroon is a reality and a permanent reality in the country. The efforts are also coming from uh, the international community with the United Nations Human Rights Spokesperson Ravina Shamdasani, who has strongly condemned the gruesome killing of the students in Kumba in the southwest region of the country. And she is calling for thorough investigations to track down the 
culprits so the perpetrators and the punishment that should be given to them according to the law should be um, thoroughly investigated by the government of the country. It is in this report by Immaculate Fogui. He was arrested at his home in Phnom Penh by around 30 police officers. United Nations Human Rights Spokesperson Ravina Shamdasani is worried about the security situation in the two English-speaking regions of Cameroon amidst the coronavirus pandemic. The leading entity of human rights strongly condemns the killing of at least seven children in a school in Kumba by armed men. Mrs. Ravina Shamdasani also calls on all armed actors to refrain from attacks on educational facilities which constitutes serious violation of international law. The organ is urging Cameroonian authorities to carry out independent and impartial investigations and equally prosecute all serious violations and abuses including acts of gender-based violence by state and non-state actors. She went further to stress on the importance of engaging inclusive dialogue in order to resolve the Anglophone crisis. The organ equally expressed concerns over the human rights situation in Myanmar, Côte d'Ivoire and Tanzania. She is calling on the different governments to ensure that the right to political participation can be exercised by all without discrimination of any kind. So Christopher Fomunyo, Senior Associate for Africa and Regional Director at the National Democratic Institute for International Relations, says there is need for serious negotiations to tackle the root causes of the ongoing conflict in Cameroon's two English-speaking regions, the northwest and southwest regions of the country. We will talk more in a GV. Dr. Christopher Fomuyo is joining us today in this edition of the news from New York. Doctor, thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure to uh, join you. Uh, I wish the circumstances were different, uh, but I'm delighted to be on the program. Thank you. You are a senior associate for African Regional Director at the National Democratic Institute for International Relations. Thank you for your time. You said in your uh, message concerning the killing of the students in Kumba and the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of the country as a whole that there is need for deep negotiations to end the conflict. What are you talking about? Uh, first of all, I, I want to express my deepest condolences uh, to the bereaved families, uh, to the entire population of Kumba or K-Town, as we usually call it fondly, uh, as well as to all of my fellow brothers and sisters, parents in the Northwest and Southwest regions that have been so impacted by this conflict. Uh, it's been four years running and right from day one, as, and as I've said, over the past four years, this conflict is not going to be resolved militarily. It's going to take sincere, serious dialogue. In fact, we've gone past the point of dialogue. We now have to talk about negotiations to get to the root causes of this conflict, to bring this kind of pain that all of us feel after Kumba, uh, to bring that kind of pain and suffering to an end. Mm. Dr. Christopher, when you're talking about deep negotiations, what exactly are you referring to? I am referring to a process by which the root causes of this conflict, of the grievances of Anglophone Cameroonians or uh, uh, English-speaking Cameroonians who used to be in the uh, descendants of the former territory of British Southern Cameroons, a recognition that these people have got grievances that are legitimate and a process, a transparent process, through which the grievances are identified and then dealt with one after the other to the satisfaction of this entire population that they're not going to be marginalized as has been the case in the past. We can only do that through genuine negotiations. And I'm also afraid that 
given the level of pain that people have gone through in the past four years, given the level of frustration and anger that people now feel vis-a-vis -vis the central government, that it's going to be important to have third parties involved in being able to keep the conversations channeled in a positive manner so that the outcome could be something that everyone would identify with and that everyone could then contribute to its implementation. Before we go further to talk more about negotiations, you said earlier that we have gone past the level of dialogue. Do you mean that dialogue can no longer work, dialogue cannot solve any problem at this point? Dialogue is always a useful tool because people have to learn to speak to each other and also listen to each other and not just talk down to the population but also listen to them. So dialogue is a useful tool. But I'm afraid that because of the four years during which we've allowed the killings to happen, that we're going to need negotiations which are a, a, a deeper consideration than just speaking to each other. Uh, for example, today we're mourning, we're mourning the seven kids that were killed in Kumba and the dozens of others that are still hospitalized with just terrible wounds. You know, we're mourning them, but this is coming after Similar incidents have happened in Gabu. Similar killings have happened in, in, in Muyuka, in Ekona, across all 13 divisions of the Northwest and Southwest regions. And because of what people have gone through, you're not going to be able to resolve this solely by speaking to them. You have to make sure that the root causes are put on the table and that all the parties that have grievances are brought into the same room for negotiations and that the outcome would be seen as the people of these two regions as having dealt with the grievances that led to the crisis in the first case. Mm. When you're talking about the root causes of the armed conflict, are you equally talking about cessation, the desire by some Cameroonians from the northwest and southwest regions of the country to restore the statehood of the former British Southern Cameroons? Are you also talking about that? Let me just be very clear about this, that when the lawyers and the teachers raised their petitions in 2016, at the time nobody talked about cessation. But when you push people to the wall and you don't give them avenues for their voices to be heard, you don't give them a sense that they belong, ultimately people are going to arrive at the conclusion that they don't belong and that they're better off elsewhere. And as I said recently in my testimony before the United States Congress, the Africa Subcommittee, I said very clearly that with each passing day, with each killing and each atrocity that is committed in the Northwest and the Southwest, more people up, want to opt out of this process because they don't see a future for themselves or for future generations. So it is incumbent on the state to move quickly to provide avenues for these issues to be addressed in all sincerity. If that has to be put on the table, it should be put on the table. And people should be convinced as to why they're better off with other options. Because at this point in time, there is no individual in the 6 million or 6 to 8 million Anglophones that exist in Cameroon, there's not one individual that I know that has not been negatively impacted by this crisis. Even those who live in, in cities like Yaoundé and Douala, just by the fact that they can't go home to see their relatives and, and spend time in the village quietly, it means that even they are being impacted. And when you have this population that's impacted in this manner, you have to be willing to subdue yourself to a conversation in which all of their grievances can be put on the table and addressed. Because if we don't address them now, this conflict can linger for years. And with each killing and with each atrocity, the heart become even more hardened. And it will come to a time when even cessation would be seen as a, a, a minimal a, a topic of conversation. So we better do it now than to do it later. Mm. Dr. Christopher Fomio, who should negotiate with who? The President of the Republic of Cameroon has been assigning his close collaborators, the Prime Minister, 
the Minister of Territorial Administration and all the other government ministers to handle some issues with regards to the socio-political and security tensions in the northwest and southwest regions of the country, but uh, something that he himself should get on to the field. He himself should go to the Northwest and talk with the people who should negotiate at this point in time. The Prime Minister, the ministers, or the President himself should come down and negotiate with uh, Dr. Sako, negotiate with Ayuk Tabe, negotiate with Mark Barita and all the rest? Well, let me just say this also very bluntly, that we all know how decisions are made in Cameroon. We all know that there's no minister in Cameroon that makes a decision without instructions from the head of state. If after four years, when thousands of people have died, including people in uniform and including innocent civilians, when we have over 70,000 refugees in neighboring countries, some in the Middle East, some in Latin America, in the Caribbean, and even in North America, when we have 800,000 kids who have not gone to school for four years, when we have 1.2 million people by United Nations statistics who are at risk of famine with projections that if nothing is done in the short term, 3 million people can now be exposed to famine in regions that used to be the basket, basket, um, bread basket of the country. If after all of these things happening in four years, the head of state himself hasn't come to the recognition that this is an existential threat to a sizable chunk of his population, then there's definitely something wrong at the corridors of power in Cameroon. This is an existential threat. And I've said that friends of Cameroon, development partners, shouldn't wait for the worst to happen before they come in to put off the fires. This is the time when friends of Cameroon should wake up and help us dig ourselves out of the mess in which we currently find ourselves. Mm. What can the friends of Cameroon do? Who are they? France, the French, United States, Germany, England, or Britain? Yes. The, the countries you, you've, you've cited are countries that uh, consider themselves development partners of Cameroon. But how can you consider yourself a genuine partner when things are falling apart and people are dying and you're not speaking up? I was happy to see that after the massacre in Kumba, that the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, sent out a message of condolence to the, fam the bereaved families. I would wish, I would hope, that at the next setting of the United Nations Security Council, the crisis in Cameroon could also be discussed. Look at how the international partners have rallied around to resolve the issue in Libya. And a few weeks ago, the Libyans signed a peace agreement in Geneva to bring peace to their own country. So must we wait for more people to die in Cameroon before our international partners can come along? Why are they partners if they cannot speak up, even to their friends, if they cannot help us get together and find a way out of this crisis? So I call on those partners. I also call on the African Union to take its responsibilities because our continental organizations are losing their credibility when they stand around and they see Africans killing other Africans and they don't say anything. So the regional bodies have to wake up and intervene and get and, and get their reputation back by intervening and creating an environment where we can now sit down as Cameroonians and talk to each other and resolve this crisis by going deeply to the root causes so that we don't put a bandage over a situation and then in 10, 20 years, there's yet another war because future generations disagree with what we agreed upon at this point in time. The United Nations Secretary General has been talking about the crisis. Uh, the, the latest statement from the U.S. came from the uh, from the U.N. came from the uh, United Nations Human Rights Spokesperson uh, Macron. President Macron of France has been talking about it, and other uh, uh, world leaders have been talking. What else can they do beyond talking, beyond statements? Yes. What else can they do? I, I, yes, I think that public public diplomacy and the statements that they make are important. They're useful because they send a message to people on the ground that they are paying attention at higher levels. But I think we have, at this point in time, to go beyond just speeches and declarations. We have to look at targeted sanctions. There are people in countries such as Cote d'Ivoire and the Democratic Republic of Congo 
who were, when the those countries were under crisis, targeted sanctions were meted out against individuals who were the perpetrators of violence and atrocities. It is about time we start talking seriously about targeted sanctions that will put some of these individuals on notice that they will be held personally responsible for atrocities that are being committed in the Northwest and in the Southwest regions. That will be a first place to start. We can look at financial, um, financial sanctions. We can look at visa restrictions. There are a whole host of tools and instruments that our partners can use to, to spread notice on the perpetrators of violence and atrocity. And I'm afraid that if we don't get to that, that today we are mourning Kumba, but in another month, some other bad thing is going to happen. And we'll rally around and we'll make declarations. And I hope that that doesn't happen and that our friends could come to our aid and people can wake up and realize that this is an existential threat for the country. And if we don't resolve this, we're going to live to regret for generations to come. Dr. Christopher Fomio, Senior Associate for African Regional Director at the National Democratic Institute for International Relations. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. That's it for today. Equinox Télévision, au-delà des...